Hi everybody. Okay, so I'm going to talk quickly about Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. He gave his speech in 1963, so let's place it historically first, because a lot of people, even today, don't realize uh, how the historical timeline works out. 1865, we had the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. This does not mean that all human beings who were enslaved suddenly walked out the door easily. It took a while. Uh, nevertheless, 1865, that's when it happened. 1870, all men of any color, creed, or race got the right to vote. 1870, do you know when women got the right to vote? 50 years later, 1920. Okay, so despite the fact that all men had the right to vote, they had the right uh, to own property, etc., well, guess what? In the deep, unreconstructed South, um, the former slave owners were not very happy about uh, all of this, and so they came up with the Jim Crow laws, which basically what would happen in the states is that Okay, let's say you go to vote and you go into Shelby County, Alabama uh, and try to cast your vote and of course all of the judges and the authorities and everyone uh, are white and they don't want you to vote. Well, all they had to do was say, oh, didn't you know there's a tax? You have to pay a hundred dollar tax to vote. And you'd say, oh my gosh, okay, well I guess I can't vote. They just found a whole bunch of loopholes in order to prevent people of color particularly from using their civil rights, right, from enjoying uh, their civil rights. So what else would they do? They'd give them so-called literacy tests. I invite you to Google a literacy test. They have some pretty real examples from Alabama uh, from the early 20th century online. Um, they're not real literacy tests, by the way. They're, uh, I mean, the originals. They're just tricks basically. Uh, they are baffling, and they were meant to baffle people. Uh, what Dr. King calls uh, creative violence, basically. Uh, the Jim Crow laws were very, very creative in making sure that uh, people remained oppressed, and that's why Dr. King wrote this speech, because what they wanted was federal oversight. They wanted a Civil Rights Act, where if the states were impeding on people's civil rights, then the federal government uh, could have some oversight and you could actually take them to the Supreme Court. Um, he succeeded, by the way. He got the Voting Rights Act in 1964, um, or am I getting it backwards? And then the Civil Rights Act in 1965. It's one or the other. 1964 and 1965, uh, Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. <clears throat> so that's what they were looking for, for federal oversight. Um, okay, now to the speech itself, just a few literary devices used in speeches that I want you to really highlight, to notice in the speech, and to think about. Uh, number one, figurative language. We have similes and metaphors. Simile is simply when you say something is like something that it cannot be. Uh, so basically, you know, Forrest Gump, life is like a box of chocolates, right? Um, life is not literally a box of chocolates, but it's a simile. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Um, metaphors, on the, other, on the other hand, don't use like or as. They just say uh, something that you cannot be. So basically, if someone's a good athlete, they'll say, oh, she's a beast, right? She's not literally a beast. It's a metaphor. They're very powerful in writing uh, because they allow people to experience something that they could not otherwise experience, uh, which is why Dr. King uses so many of them in his speech, because believe me, even the crowd to which he was speaking had not personally um, gone through enslavement. And so he was talking about 100 years later, right, after these shackles and so he had to use metaphors. Uh, if you'll see in the, oh, well, in our version, it's the second paragraph, but it's actually the literal first paragraph, when he says, but 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. This is an allusion to slavery, and these are metaphors for how it felt to continue to be oppressed by these Jim Crow systems. Okay, I've only got about 30 seconds. I'm going to close caption this. So, uh, the other things I'd like you to recognize then are repetition. Why would he repeat 100 years later? And later in the speech, why would he insist on repeating now? Now is the time. Uh, these are all literary devices, as are some of the allusions he makes to historical and literary uh, script uh, figures <clears throat> and documents.
Well, I hope you enjoy the speech, and uh, I'll see you soon.